children waiting. It doesn't sound much of a problem, but in fact, I believe it is a real danger to our society. It's because adults don't care enough to provide the kind of play facilities that children need, that really ought to be theirs by right. Because we don't care enough to provide the leadership in play that children really must have, we're building up for ourselves a society which is in real danger. Obviously, all children need to play. But the environment most of our kids live in doesn't provide the things they need for their development. The street, the concrete playground, these things just aren't enough. And as we go on building more towns and developing old areas, knocking down and building up, the problems that belong to the children in these areas, problems of loneliness and boredom, and conflict with their families and conflict with their friends and in fact with the environment that surrounds them all these problems remain just the same in fact they get much worse to play means to create it means in fact to be able to express yourself freely without inhibition but until our society provides for play you'll always see children who turn in on themselves and often all this kind of turning in is channeled into aggression, into vandalism, into destruction. It really is up to us to provide the areas, the time, the materials, and the manpower. In fact, everything that children need for playing. This is Mr. Fowler from Bandley Hill Adventure Playground. Um, is there any chances of any scrap wood going? Um, sorry, there's yeah. no table tennis here. Uh, what do you mean? I'm about to be fun. Anything else? Anything else? Adventure Playground in Stevenage has been open now for five and a half years. The Play Association who operates and manages this playground um, in fact started four years before that from a local parents meeting in the infant school in the neighbourhood. Um, the first four years were spent in part fundraising, in part involving the local community in the projects that were proposed and very largely in convincing local authorities that um, what was proposed was needed in this particular area. Oh, I'm going to shake this dog and might lose someone. Kind, instant. Let me through this one. <laughs> Fingers! 
What happened? Oh, you know. The oil hasn't done much good. No. No. Have you got a spare pot for me? No. No. I'll see you later then, all right? Bye. That's a helicopter, is it? That's an aircraft carrier. That's a ship. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to put in the... We put it, yeah, we put in the blue shed, all right? And we're taking it out on Friday, and it'll be judged then. Thirty. Thirty. Two seats. It's right. Oh, oh Brenda, Morning, Joan. Can you change fifty? Yeah. Uh, Running a bit low. Yeah. Thirty. Doesn't want your money today, Carol. Oh, no, it's Where are we going, Joan? The bus usually comes along just after eleven. Okay. We ourselves would raise within the local community about three and a half thousand pounds with weekly fundraising, which still goes on to this day. However, the Development Corporation was so impressed by our efforts that they not only agreed to allow us to use the land, they also made some grant aid towards our capital expenditure. The National Playing Fields Association also came in with a grant toward our capital expenditure and our first year's salary, which in fact meant that our original gamble of running for one year um, was now extended to two. Let me have one, I ain't have one. Wow, I preparing a, a study of the playground within Stevenage to study their, their history, their aims and their future hopes. And within this Any voluntary committee aiming to run adventure playgrounds must prove itself capable of carrying out this task successfully for at least six months. By that time it could expect the local education authorities, much of whose work it will be doing, to offer grant aid towards the salaries of the leaders. The social service departments would also be expected to offer grant aid since the leadership is deeply involved with their workers. And finally, the local authority with whose children the playground is working would also be expected to offer help in running expenses. There's two issues. One, there's sort of immediate sort of handout publicity. And then there's also the issue of doing a documentary type of report to uh, collate the information sort of hours that have been spent knocking on doors before the Urban District yeah. Council were interested, yeah. uh, which the yeah. town has a great debt to pay to. Uh, we have a sort of, you know, our own Stevenage message. We, in fact, are as the engineer has told us, we are planning for the town's play, which is more than anywhere else in the world is doing. If you read the sort of latest glosses on the adventure playgrounds by sort of continental authors, there's very few towns the size of Stevenage with four playgrounds plus a play scheme. You know, we, we're on the top. So one, we ought to shout it from the rooftops. And secondly, we ought to sort of look at it very hard to see where we've made mistakes, where we can improve.
you know, when I first came down onto the playground in 1970, it seemed to me there were just a lot of kids playing, building, expressing themselves. But then as I became involved with it that year, last year and now this year, I've seen, in fact, what it really means, how a little boy of three can come down and not talk to anybody in the first two weeks. You display no signs of communication whatsoever. And gradually, over eight weeks, begin to talk, tell you about when he went to the seaside, work with tools, ask you for nails, ask you for a cup of tea, tell you about all his problems. Now, this is what it's about. Or you can get an older lad come down and say to us at a dance when he's had a couple of, couple of pints, he said, why weren't you down here? Why weren't you people around here when I was 12 or 13? Come on, lads. Come on! Come on, lads! Come on! Get up, man! Lads! Come on! Come on, pull it off, my boy. Let me go, Nick. Come on, Nick. Lift your head up, don't I? I can't get them off. Would you hold those for a please? Oh, you suck! Here, shake your head. No, Robert does it again. What is the matter with you? Please! I what? He's never pushing me. Try using your common sense, Robert. <laughs> I'm going to get you back. I ain't touched him yet. So what I'm did Daddy exactly do to you? What did Daddy do to you? He stood at you. No, he didn't. He pushed me on there. Pushed you down? Yeah. He was chasing you? Yeah, and he pushed me down. He says I threw a piece of wood at him. I kept... He said him. He hit me on the face. Come on. Can you shake your head? Does it fall off as you shake it? I say, get him right. <laughs> I am, you can't stop me. I thought you'd already had it out of him. I haven't, I ain't touched him yet. I say, let him fight it out. I mean, would a school be expected to have, say, 400 children and about four members of staff? Over the last couple of weeks, we've all been, to a certain extent, exhausted by the behaviour of just two children. Now, these two kids on the playground <laughs> <laughs> have literally exhausted us because they, during normal school time, they attend special schools, they need special education, they need very close attention, very <coughs> skilled attention, and none of us have the training or, in fact, the time to work with these kids. Now, surely the, the, the important point here is that the educational authorities, once again coming down to the uh, county council, should be asked and pressurised um, to provide finance, mm. to provide assistance, because we are not able to work with them, they become increasingly frustrated mm. and they're doing a lot of harm to our relationship with the other th two or three hundred children on the playground. These are welfare problems, they are the welfare authority and they have got some, mm. uh, yeah. some duties which they should be performing here. Mm. I'm glad to sure. see that, um, uh, Mr Chairman, that uh, Jack's been on to the uh, county, um, perhaps they can do something in the short term, but certainly in the long term, these are exactly the things which we've got mm. to discuss uh, with the county council and try to get this extra support and take the load off the play leaders. Surely we only opened up so that the children could go there and play. No. No. But what do you do when the problem's there? Do you, you know, brush it away or...? Most certainly not. These are the very problems that have to be tackled. And a play leader, of course, can only be expected to diagnose the problems to know to whom he can turn for professional aid, and that's where the education authorities and the social services come in. In other words, adventure playgrounds have to be seen as an integral part of the educational and social service systems of our country. They're not just a kind of gimmick to keep kids off the street. There's a folly hat. I saw the hat. That's the pet. We're going to do the bottom of the plate. Dodge. What's that, John? Discipline on the playground is real discipline, because you mainly it's self-discipline, it's social discipline. discipline you hope of, of respect for others. Of course, because most people's experience is completely opposite to that. It takes a long time to develop, you know. 
they still be stealing from other children's camps or hitting smaller children. But by talking over the problem, they listen and they understand. And it's absolute nonsense to say children don't understand or children aren't responsible. Yeah. With parents, if you can show them their own children playing and working, working with hammers, working with saws, building things, see them working with other children, helping other children when they're hurt, they themselves will come to realise that they can become involved. It falls in with everything else that the playground does. It's helping anybody work and express themselves. Actually defending people and sharing our experiences with people so that they can develop themselves in terms of work, in terms of recreation, in terms of living with children, living with other people. You know, they're very loose phrases, but I do relate to specific circumstances, with the specific methods of work on the program, specific things which develop. seen that the children are learning to live with themselves and to live with other people through play and through enjoyment. It's generally the task of voluntary organizations to provide all the money for all the expenses over the first six months. Now where is it to come from? These schemes must be allowed to prove themselves as they most surely will so the National Playing Field Association provides money to bridge this gap. With your help, the NPFA can ensure that children get the play capacity that is theirs by right and which our modern way of life has totally destroyed for them. We want everybody to move from awareness to concern, particularly concern in your own community and action there to create more play opportunities that so many children are waiting for. Come on, little girl singing up there. 